continuation of the things that we've been doing here on the, the special occasions when we have people, um, illustrious members of the cigar, the cigar gangsters, as I like to call them. Um, Thank you, George. We like to get. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you fit the bill, so it's all right, you know. Imposing you and again. scary, imposing scary and silent. Um, I I think uh, I think that you know that what I want you guys to understand is that that Guillermo is literally he's like the living, breathing, walking pivot in the modern cigar business. Everything that 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 was his to begin with, when uh, when the when the keys got turned over to him, uh, is is looking backwards to what the Dominican Republic was and and how uh, how it evolved to the picture that it is today, being the 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 source of of many of the greatest cigars in the world, including that little island off Key West. Um, and I think that it's it's really important to know, you know, that, that La Aurora as a brand, you know, it's it, the company is the oldest in the Dominican Republic, and the evolution of the product is is, is extraordinary. But it's it's a, a line of cigars <coughs> that literally defined the Dominican Republic before cigar smokers everywhere even knew the Dominican Republic existed, as a as a tobacco producer or a, 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 an exporter of finished cigars. So. In, in the United States, the in in you know living memory uh, for for a few of us, the only Dominican cigar you could buy was a La Aurora, and it was the 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 thing that defined where the where the market was. But if you think of it as as a, um, today's model, it's as old school a cigar as you could get. So when Guillermo um, comes into the picture. It's more or less like having his father uh, say to him, "Here's the keys to the family sedan. Don't screw it up." And, uh, true. and you know, and, and it was a you know a dark gray, uh, nameless four door with a uh, vinyl interior. And Guillermo promptly pulled it into the garage and uh, started tinkering. And he emerged with a uh, a two door with the heart of a race car. And and it's everything about the what happened from the moment that you arrived. And this is not to take anything away. I mean, the, the, the old uh, La Aurora cigars, the Bristol Especial was a beautiful cigar. It always had the most glorious wrappers. And this is in an era, you know, when, when, when La Aurora came into this market, the, the sexy wrapper of all was a, was, a, was a Cameroon. And if you were at the top of the, of the, of the pops, remember the, our conversations with yeah. Benjamin Menendez, Cameroon defined you and, and Connecticut mm -hmm. was sort of like this yeah, not really cigar, you know. So, of course, that's what this product had. It was absolutely beautiful. But you get to an era where uh, the late 80s and the early 90s, the, 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 the Connecticut shade and then some of the hybrids that started showing up all started to define the market and pull away. And many, many things happened in terms of blending and, and uh, the, uh, what was going on. And in the meantime, La Aurora is continuing to make this same standard of cigar. And the this, consuming, demanding more. Absolutely. More and more. All they the time. want it, yeah. with, uh, always, always yeah. wanting more product. But, but e again, the, the evolution was that, that the, you know, the Dominican Republic, uh, the identity exploded, and all of these things were, were uh, uh, coming into the marketplace, and people were, were literally, uh, you know, companies were, were basically achieving an identity overnight, and the Leon family, the La Aurora products, and the things that developed during the boom came out and, and continued to find their market, but without getting the respect that the oldest company in, in, the, in the nation deserved. And so uh, there's a handful of things that you did right away that announced that it was going to be different. Um, certainly for cigar people who are looking in the middle of the boom the appearance of uh you know i mean first of all the the the, the leon jimenez line and the and the, the change that that reflected was was something different but when we when we got to the point where the preferido uh, emerges everybody had to stand up and and say wow you you they they literally found 
well, this mold's 100 years old when you, mm -hmm. when you revive them, and they started to make mm -hmm. the most beautiful perfectos that, that you'd ever seen. I mean, these things were, were so beautiful, you didn't know whether you wanted to sleep with them or smoke them. And they were, they were literally extraordinary <laughs> product. But you know, the thing is that, and, and then, and then they, they, did, they took it one step further and, and produced this beautiful tube packaging. Now, before, before those, you know, the sapphire and all, all the, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the shapes that started appearing in the tubes, Nobody had seen packaging like that. You know, guys made fancy boxes, they did a few things, but nobody had ever done anything like that. The shapes themselves were e extraordinary. The packaging was, was absolutely unforgettable. I mean, it would really pop in a, you'd walk in a humidor and you'd go, what the hell is that? Where'd it come from? And it has the La Aurora name. So these things started to appear and, and, and it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, once the ball was rolling, you got unleashed and, and, and you know, we had the Preferito Robusto was a hit. There, was, there were so many different things that occurred mm -hmm. that all of a sudden they're blending with tobaccos that they had never used before. Uh, you know, of course, at Cigar Aficionado, we're kind of scratching our heads going, where the hell did this come from? It was fantastic. It was mm -hmm. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And the other thing you got to realize is that, that this, the campus where this place is produced in the middle of, uh, of the wild, wild west uh, Dominican Republic is the most orderly, magnificent thing you've ever seen in your life. And, and, and I, I'm, you know, in, in the midst of all these guys uh, growing uh, left and right, uh, factories are scrambling for employees. And these guys, no one ever leaves. It's like you've died and gone to heaven when you work at, uh, in this factory. So I guess the first thing is, uh, do you remember what it felt like to be presented with, you know, to have them parachute you into the part of the cigar business and say, okay, it's yours now, make it, uh, you know, make it uh, uh, shine? Well, uh, the first thing I, I told my dad was, I need your advice and please don't, don't, don't leave me alone on that because his, his expertise on, on the business was at that time, probably 55 years, 60 right. years. So, so we wo was in, in the 90s, 94. 94. 94. And so after he said that to his dad, his father promptly got on a plane and flew off to Africa to go on a safari and said, you'll do fine, <laughs> right? And that's well, but, but the truth is that by his, his last month of leaving so he he stayed with me or I stayed with him whatever you want to call it and and I feel very well because uh, taking advantage on that yeah uh, I could uh, show him all the projects uh, gi give him all the samples all the blends and it was amazing. It was amazing for me. I, I feel very, very proud. And the, the other thing that, that sort of followed the success of, of, of the things that I described in the beginning was his father always used to have a particular cigar in his pocket. And it was a beautiful little Corona that was so perfectly made. There was no band on it. If you ever went to the factory and you got one of those cigars, you, you, were, you were smoking the definition of, of an excellent Dominican cigar, the most extraordinary flavor you ever had. And they were, you know, that, that if, I'm not, if I'm remembering correctly, he had one man that rolled those for him, one. and that tobacco was always basically isolated and reserved. It was only yeah. used for that project. Well, yeah, we, well, we still have cigars because what we did was batches, mm -hmm. ten thousand cigars, mm -hmm. and those cigars uh, he gave away to his friend, relative, and family. And, uh, and if you ever smoked a Don Fernando, all you wanted was one more. <laughs> yeah, that. His daily smoke, Corona size, and, and had the same band on Leon Jimenez. Mm -hmm. So some people tend to confuse. Mm -hmm. But the box, I don't know if you remember, was uh, engraved with the Hechos right. Especialmente para right. Fernando. 
So we still have those cigars. Uh, uh, we will release this brand this year. Uh, but we, we will do in several sizes. Well, so tell me, well, before we get to that, because I was going to tease these guys about that uh, for, for, for later, but, but how, it, in, in relate, say, the, the Don Fernando blend and the, and the success of, of you know, the, the impression that that made on all these people to the Cien Años blend. When you made the 100th anniversary, how, how, how different was it? Completely different. Remember, remember uh, the Cien Años blend is a puro dominicano. Right. Uh, so, 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 so no other tobacco the, from other countries go inside the blend. In the Don Fernando, I don't know if you remember, the first cigars were made with Cameroon. Cameroon, right, yeah. of course. Then we switch. When we, uh, uh, we grew the tobacco for the Cien for Años, Cien Años. Yes. he tried the, the, the wrapper and he said, I want it for my cigar. Then we, we switch, we switch. But we still have batches from Cameroon. From the, from the original. From the original, yeah. So... <laughs> Now we have two cigars, two Don Fernando yeah. cigars. Uh, but the the one that have the the the, the Acorojo wrapper mm -hmm. is is the the one that he he chose at the end. I mean, at the end. Uh, and where eight years. where where are the farms that are growing the the capa? Where where is the uh, the finca it's, for? It's uh, located in Savannah del Puerto. It's, mm -hmm. it's near to Bonao. Bonao. In the middle of the Santo Domingo and Santiago, mm -hmm. in between, and uh, I don't know if you have heard about it, but it's the best place to 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 grow the rubber. Well, yeah. it's where and uh, only, Fuente only the, where the Fuentes grow, and, and General Cigar has yeah. the the, the, the and, rubber. And General has had markedly less success with that uh, with the wrapper that that comes out of that. I mean, certainly if you say Dominican puro. One of two things comes up, you know, Fuente Fuente Opus X or the Cien Años. Yeah, because uh, general, uh, what they grow there is is uh, candela. Yeah, the candela, exactly. It's, it's, so uh, it, it, Connecticut you know, a seed. green a green wrapper yeah. uh, in a Connecticut shade. So it's but a, but even though they do have a very good wrapper, mm -hmm. even it's candela. I mean, the texture, the burn, yeah, is the flavor. Um, don't ask me because I don't like candela. Right, but. But it's a it's a good wrapper. I mean, if you if you want to smoke your grandfather's cigar, that's that that's the wrapper to have, yeah. right? But it's not uh, not even close in terms of body or complexity no, or, or nuance. No, no so. even the taste is like a metallic taste. Yeah, this is it's a strange, it's a funny taste. But so, Cien Años sort of busts onto the scene and uh, yeah. and makes everybody. Uh, makes everybody uh, uh, excited that, that uh, an, another version of a Dominican Puro is possible, and it's a completely different flavor. It's a totally unique taste. It's not like anything else that's been produced. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, I mean, it's, it stands out as very distinctive from the other La Aurora blends, but oh, yeah. it's also unlike any other, other Dominican cigar. What, mm -hmm. what do you, what's the capacity? In other words, what, what can you reasonably expect? Can you sustain I mean, we, you know, we, it was limited production when it began. At that and time, we had a few. 500,000. Yeah. Uh, our capacity today, we, we, we can make 24, 25,000 cigars a day. Uh -huh. make. But obviously, we, we won't uh, uh, turn. You don't want to overproduce. You don't want to no, overproduce. No. And how long do they age? You mean this? Yeah. This? Eight years. This is the the, so, so the original the, uh, a batch. Ah. We keep well, that's we keep yeah we keep fifty thousand uh, robustos. So you just heard so. the the the, the so. W Curtis Draper. Oh yeah, one one twenty five robusto is eight years old. Yep. So one of the things that that we we're talking is the evolution of. Cien Años, the tobacco, the, the production, I think it's extraordinary that, that these are, you know, still available. And we thank you for uh, making them available to us. Oh, you know, uh, 
La Aurora has a commitment with Vapors for the anniversary cigar, which we thank them to trust us. And uh, we will continue delivering good products. So you mentioned that you're going to do a Don Fernando. You're going to do it as a, as a production series. Yeah. What kind, of, uh, what kind of distribution? Are you going to, I mean, how many outlets, how many stores do you think oh, you can? Ha I haven't think about it, but it will not be a, a, a mass production cigar. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't. We can't. You know how, how jellos yeah. have been How you, you guard it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so it will be on the market, but... And are the sizes decided yet? Obviously, one of them has to be the Corona. Huh? Yeah, well, the Corona should be because it was his size. Yeah. But we will add a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for Busto, probably. I promise you, when it comes out, you'll be, you know, we'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll feature it, and you guys will have an opportunity to taste, and you'll see that it's, there's really no flavor in the Dominican Republic like it. It, it, it stands alone. And it's, it's, you know, certainly worth uh, isolating. Kedrick. Well, the, <laughs> well, you're going to launch uh, for the show. trade show, so yeah. that'll, be, uh, that'll be July, which means realistically we'll get them shipped uh, sometime in August, early September. I mean, if you, if you want today, I can send you from the batch with one size. Oh, we'd love to have a little preview oh, yeah. here. Yeah. We'd love to be able to preview no for the guys here. Yeah. And that would be because you know, we have it. We'll do it. We'll we'll, uh, we'll 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 invite the locker holders to come in and do a uh, we'll a, a private tasting. <laughs> so, let's talk for a minute about the thing that we really haven't, which I I'm I'm so I was so excited to see and really happy to have, and that's the Guillermo Leon blend. You know, because you're you're always standing in the background and making everybody do their job and, and, and assure that the product continues to flow with this sort of magic consistency that you guys have achieved. And then all of a sudden, this product comes out and announces a new era in the company. And it was a, a great, yeah. I mean, the, again, the wrapper is so beautiful and so distinctly different than La Aurora, than 107, oh, yeah. than the Cien, Cien Años, which we have coveted so much. Well, let me tell you, George, when we, I was working with the blend, uh, I, I, I didn't give the okay mm -hmm. until I was satisfied 100%. That's my blend, that's the cigar that I, w I will smoke. So it's that's the new generation, Don Fernando. Yeah, well, you could say yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah, could absolutely. say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, no, and what I, it means is a cigar being produced for the, for the head of the company. That's, that's what you mean, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. The, new, the, the next generation. And I don't know how many of you guys have, have tried them. Um, you know, we've, we've always positioned them with pride of place in the, in the walk-in. And, 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 of course, we, we tried to announce them with great fanfare when they came out. But uh, there, it, it, it's all I can say is that it, again, you have this issue of this wrapper that's absolutely magnificent, really, really beautiful, yeah. and the flavor. The, the the key, what I always think is the uh, is the is the hook for Guillermo Leon is if you smell the cigar, if somebody sitting next to you lights one up, mm -hmm. you can't resist. You have to go get one. You you absolutely have to go get one and. I also like, aside from that one front cigar, uh, I love the uh, I love the sizes. I think they're all beautiful. The Bellicoso, the the classic Corona Robusto. The Corona Gorda is, is my favorite. Really? See. It was the first time we 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 made a ring gauge that big. And and we construct a cigar with with two binders. Mm -hmm. We never did that. Mm -hmm. Which I think uh, it will. Uh, make more complex the mm -hmm. smoke. Yeah, the flavor's yeah. there. So you don't lose the impact. And obviously in the, in the same vein that I ask uh, whether or not, you know, the, when, what the sizes are for the Don Fernando, are you going to bring out anything new for Guillermo Leon later in the year? New size or anything? As a matter of fact, we are making one. Uh, 
six. How can I explain to you? It's, it's, it's like a... It's a figurado? Uh, it's a figurado, but... But uh, it's unique? Different size than... than different size from, from, from the one that I'm making. Right. Yeah. Also, we add the Sumo Show Robusto mm -hmm. in the 107.2. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. That's great. We launched it for Pro Cigar Festival. Uh-huh. So people got to taste it at Pro yeah, Cigar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys should... One of these days... Uh, uh, we have to organize a, uh, maybe for next year, we have to organize uh, uh, a Draper's crew to go down to Pro Cigar. Oh, that will be awesome. Because it's, and then you, you can get a, uh, a you know, a, a factory tour and see uh, how extraordinary this oh, is. Yeah. And the, that would be very good. The level of, uh, the level of quality control, the dedication, the, the and it, it's, it's always great when you do that because you get the opportunity to see a variety of uh, approaches to manufacturing, and you see uh, dramatic differences in uh, not just how tobacco is handled, but but the, what the rolling galleries are like. In other words, where people are producing, and you see different philosophies about making cigars. But it's really easy to see um, excellence. You know, in other words, you 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 intuitively know when you're looking at the gallery in a place like this that the cigars that are coming out are. An extraordinary level. There are different, they're cut above, and it's you know the, the, there's some advantages to being 108 years old. Probably playing football isn't one of them, but uh, you know um, having uh, having that experience and that track record and that level of of, uh, of of expertise everywhere in the factory, from the guys that are handling the tobacco when it comes in mm -hmm. to the rollers to the supervision. There's nothing like it. If I, if I can interject to that point, I was very lucky to go down to visit La Aurora two years ago. I believe Jerry Cruz was supposed to be on that trip. Um, <laughs> Key word being supposed to. I went a year later. It was a schedule, it was a schedule <laughs> conflict. But, um, you know, I happened to be the only Dominican American on the trip. And for us, the Leon family is like saying the Vanderbilt to the rock club. That's right. So to be able to go into the factory, see the process, but also um, keep this in mind. We flew in at, I think, 10 o'clock at night. We get to the hotel, Guillermo's there, and we proceed to have a, an excellent dinner, drinks, cigars, and I think we stayed up till 3 in the morning. And Dominican midnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my parents own that. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. But, he used you know, to it. Visiting exactly. the factory and seeing what they do, and, and one thing that I, I really that really resonated with me at least was that our our first visit to the factory, we sat down in the conference room, we tasted puro, essentially, you know, tobacco of one type, which is a very incredible experience. It's one thing to say that this cigar has X Y Z different types of tobacco in it, but to to have a cigar of one type. Then you start picking up nuances and you realize how, how difficult it is to run the cigar. Um, but one thing that really resonated with me was Guillermo sitting down at the table and, and looking at us and saying, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? How can we be better? What can we do to get you to buy a Laura cigar? They literally went down to the consumer level. And I mean, we had people from marketing, advertising, every single department was represented. And for a company that old, to be that open to other people's opinions tells me that they're doing something right. And to dovetail on that, not long after that trip, the Guillermo Leon came out um, to a lot of fanfare, the 107. Yeah. But what other company but La Aurora, in my opinion, would create a 107 Lancero strictly based on Twitter fanfare? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's Nobody's done that. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's, a, it's a cigar that was, was a direct result of our demands, and, and I'll be damned if that cigar didn't meet and exceed what we were expecting. So and, I, mean, I commend you on that. And, and that means that, the, that means well, there should be a Don Fernando thank Lancero you, the consumers. as well. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. Should definitely yeah. be a Don yeah. Fernando yeah. Lancero. Yeah. And, and to your point about the idea, the, the experience of tasting components and recognizing, again, the same, the same thing, who, who but, but uh, 
uh, La Aurora could produce a line that has the exact same shape and the same blend with three different wrappers so that you can educate yourself. Yeah. You can understand, yeah. you know, with the Dominican wrapper, uh, Brazilian wrapper, and the... Uh, uh, oh, the we have Cameroon, Connecticut, uh, Sumatra, Ecuador, yeah. Brazil. Yeah, Ecuador. So the we Brazil have six. Is, and they're beautiful. So, you know, tasting that, getting the opportunity to... So, you mean, really, literally, it's a, it, it's a self-education uh, course. You can, you can go through those three cigars and really start to understand, first of all, what an impact wrapper has on, uh, you know, even, even though it's the smallest portion of the, you know, the, the, the smallest percentage of the construction, a huge difference in the flavor and the balance that, that it, it, you know, the, the, the filler and binder really show well in that, too, because, obviously, uh, they, they perf the cigars burn. Mm -hmm. Effortlessly. Yeah, and very equilibrate, balanced. Yeah, they are yeah. extremely balanced. Mm -hmm. So that, if, you, if you have not done that, I suggest that you take an afternoon sometime here and, and, and give yourself enough time to do it and smoke all three versions and you uh, uh, come to us naturally for advice in what order to smoke them. Yeah. <laughs> but, but smoke them nonetheless because it's a fantastic experience and you can't do it anywhere else. It's not possible. You know, not 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 built the same way, but with that variation, and in a size that you guys will all enjoy. Obviously, what what um, what led you to 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 take the cigar company yourself to to separate that from the rest of the business? Well, uh, at that time, my father asked me to do it. Uh, you mean when I entered to the company? No, 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 to, to take the cigar business separate from all, all the other enterprises. Oh, you mean yeah. last year? Right. Oh, okay. Well, uh, the, the beer, the brewing business was, uh, or is, very competitive there. And the, all of the executive the focus were beer, 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 and then rum, you know, and I was, at that time, I was, I belonged to the, to the uh, Consejo, como se dice Consejo? The council. The, ca the uh, council. The board, the board of directors. The board, the board yeah. of directors, and, and we, we had a meeting every week, mm -hmm. talking about everything, you know, and at the end, cigars. Uh -huh. so, so their focus was... Uh, uh, you, you didn't drink. think cigars were getting enough respect? Well, uh, at least enough attention. Mm -hmm. then, then for me, going to Santo Domingo, spending one day of the week, uh, I mean, I'd rather put it into the cigar business. Mm -hmm. So that was a decision. I mean, they took it them, themselves. I talked to them and explained. And, Say yes, you're right. Our focus is beer. How, and and you know he's talking about the beer business being competitive, but what, what percentage of the market do, do uh, does Presidente and uh, and Heineken? What, do, what 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 does it represent? You think? Ninety. Uh, mm, Eighty. Like eighty-five. Yeah. So eighty-five uh, percent. Eighty-five percent of the market. We won't even talk about what percentage of the cigar market they have domestically, but what about the cigarette market? Not anymore. We, we are not you in sold it. Phil yeah. Morris got, took the whole thing. Yeah. So, because they used to own that too. Licensees for Phil Morris and, was it, 90, yeah. uh, 90, 90 percent of the... Uh, right. Yeah, something like 87, 80, yeah. And cigars too. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's, that was my point. That was my no, point. No, is that still. you can't if if you're if you're going to buy a cigar. And by the way, uh, obviously when you go uh, and you're and you're part of a group and you visit Pro Cigar, you're going to see a lot of factories and people are going to uh, uh, offer you things and it's a great learning experience. But when you're on the island and you want to buy a cigar, you're buying a La Aurora. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But you know, they are still distributing my, my product. Mm -hmm. I mean, the group. Right. Yeah. 
In other words, the, the pipeline for, for, for delivery of the product. Yeah, for is, mass is, market, yeah. in the same uh, trucks mm -hmm. of the, of the uh, beer. Right. For, for premium, uh -huh. we have four, four routes. Your own, your own fleet that no, does that? Four routes. Yeah. Four vendors for the whole island. Wow. It, the, the, the logistics of doing of delivering everything that the family enterprise uh, yeah. produces and, and, and distributes is extraordinary. Thank it you, makes uh, it makes you know distributing cigars here look like a walk in the park. Well, for you to have an idea, we we should have like 30, 32,000 point of sale for beer. For cigars, even in the drugstore, mm -hmm. mass market exactly. cigar. Yes. Yeah. And ha and how long? How the, the mass market production? How how? Um, first of all, how different is it um, in in terms of the of the product itself, mix and you know what uh, the liga and. Uh, well, we 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 produce uh, the principes. I don't right. know if you remember yeah, that I do. product. It's a. Uh, a 25 or 5 count box, right? Uh, aluminum foil, mm -hmm. soft aluminum, and uh, we we should be selling nine million this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's sold everywhere. Yeah, I mean, everywhere yeah. is right. Oh yeah, yeah. But that's machine made, huh? Yeah. Well. That's, I just, that's a, our strength, you know. right? Is Distribution, yeah. Universally available, in in fantastic condition. You know, you don't have any complaints about uh, about that. And uh, honestly, that same ethic applies to what happens with uh, La Aurora products in this country. Everything is in perfect condition, and they uh, they arrive immaculate. Thank you. And it's we're, and we're happy Quality to be. Quality for us is number one. 